Hi, everyone. I'm Andrew Boyaji, and I'm joined by Andy Galea. Hello, everybody. Today, we're here to share our experience in building an automated DevOps ecosystem for 7,000 users at the Commonwealth Bank. During the session, you'll learn about how we leverage Jira and Confluence at the core of our automated management system, what benefits we've realized so far, and what we're planning next to take our ecosystem to the next level. First, we'll cover a quick history of our DevOps ecosystem, which became the foundation for our automated management system. Next, I'll cover some of the pain points we started to experience and how we overcame these by bringing together people, process, and technology, and the benefits we've received as a result. Andy will cover what's next for our ecosystem and how we're looking to turbocharge engineering velocity. Initially, the DevOps tools used for development were managed by the individual teams that used them as a side gig to their main role, which was to ship awesome software. As you'd expect, there was a proliferation of tools which weren't scalable for use across the organization. The tool chain was highly fragmented and had inconsistent use across the organization. It's a scenario that I'm sure many large enterprises have found themselves in in the past. To move from the inconsistent fragmented tool chain to the DevOps ecosystem we have today, we went through a three-step process for each phase of the DevOps lifecycle. First, we underwent a tool selection process to select one enterprise tool for the organization. Next, each tool was industrialized for high availability, performance, and compliance with security requirements. Finally, we pushed mass adoption and utilization whilst migrating users from non-enterprise tool sets onto the enterprise endorsed tools. With a scalable, performant tooling ecosystem in place, we started to integrate our tool chain to help increase velocity for delivery teams. Even though for a period of time we had a concentrated effort to industrialize our tooling ecosystem, it's always evolving with new capabilities being added as required. Over the coming few years, we're looking to move, off our, move our tooling off-prem onto the cloud, starting with Jira and Confluence in the coming few months. Two of the tools that went on that journey were Confluence and Jira. The industrialization and scaling process for Jira and Confluence were hugely successful as the organization organically and rapidly adopted Jira and Confluence within a very short period of time. Focusing on Jira as an example, Jira was selected as the agile tool of choice in 2017 before we industrialized it in 2018. The uptake of Jira within the Commonwealth Bank was phenomenal with a 451% increase in of in users in the first year. We then scaled the use of Jira by decommissioning rogue instances and migrating users onto the in industrialized enterprise instance. Jira became the single most used tool by technology delivery teams within the Commonwealth Bank. I distinctly remember walking between floors and seeing Jira open on almost every screen in the office, which I must admit was very rewarding for our team. It was at this point that we started to consider the ways in which we might be able to leverage the power of having one tool used by all tech delivery profiles, including engineers, BAs, delivery managers, and product owners. As we were wrapping up the industrialization phase of our tooling ecosystem, the organization was undergoing a significant shift towards agile ways of working. With this shift, we started to see lots of variance in the way teams were developing, testing, and releasing their systems to production. Whilst on one hand, it was awesome for teams to have high levels of autonomy and flexibility, governance teams began introducing manual gates and checks to try and standardize the input into their control processes. Being a bank, we have several regulatory compliance considerations required in the delivery of technology. We saw velocity start to drop with multiple uncoordinated changes to governance processes taking place. Often a delivery team will be on a continual learning journey as they traverse the various governance mechanisms that were in place. Out of, this out of this situation was born our journey to develop a modernized SDLC, leveraging Jira and Confluence at the core of our tooling, tooling ecosystem to bring together people, process, and technology. So how do we bring together people, process, and technology? We started with a goal which is very similar to the goal that most organizations would have, which was to create an environment that enables quality software to be shipped at pace. We started by engaging multiple software delivery teams and governance teams to understand their pain points. From this, we created some principles that we used in designing our ecosystem. As a principle, we wanted to create a solution that was tailored, automated, and easy for both delivery teams and governance teams. We we're looking to abstract the complexity for delivery teams in understanding what they had to do for the type of release they had planned. 
Any solution had to be easy for teams, taking work to them rather than having something abstract on the side that created additional work. Next, focusing on what outcomes were required was more important than how something was done. This was critical to providing teams flexibility and allowing for teams of varying maturity to get to the desired outcome without being prescriptive on how they got there. Finally, traceability and adaptability throughout the system development process to remove manual governance gates and provide transparency across the organization. With these principles established, we iterated on a solution that would be adopted by 7,000 colleagues in under 10 months. Leveraging the centralized use of JIRA and Confluence, we created an SDLC solution that connects people, process, and technology to simplify the delivery experience for teams. The SDLC and DevOps ecosystem is made up of the SDLC framework, SDLC core technology, our integrated DevOps tools and pipelines, and an in-house developed reporting tool. Starting with the SDLC framework, you can consider the framework, the instruction manual on how to ship high quality software within CBA. It connects the risks, controls, and SDLC practices, providing a single view of what needs to be done and by who. The establishment of the SDLC framework has given us control over the end-to-end -end delivery cycle for software delivery. Establishing change control and preventing cycle bloating through new processes being implemented. The SDLC core technology leverages our centralized use of JIRA and Confluence to take work to the team. We'll take a closer look at this in a moment. Essentially, the solution injects SDLC practices into the tools where teams do their work, taking the work to teams. A key component of the ecosystem is our DevOps tools and pipelines, and Andy will walk through what we're doing in this space in a few moments. The ecosystem is underpinned by learning and support, which help guide our 7,000 users on how to use the SDLC and where to go for support. So let's take a look at the user journey. The user journey starts with a member of the Scrum team filling in the SDLC wizard, which asks for a few questions about the type of work the team are doing. This form is on our SDLC site that's hosted on Confluence. Our solution then uses an applicability matrix to determine which SDLC practices are relevant for the team. This is dependent on a number of factors, including the criticality of the system and the type of change. The solution then creates an EPIC in the team's JIRA project and creates all the required SDLC practices as tasks within that EPIC. One cool feature of this is that the JIRA tasks are automatically assigned to the relevant person in the squad. So all the BA tasks are assigned to the BA, engineering tasks to the engineers, and so on. At the same time, an SDLC hub is created within the team's existing Confluence space. The hub provides a list of all the practices generated, a link to the JIRA task for each, its assignee, and status. The hub also contains any template that may be required to complete the practice. So for example, if you need to create a test plan, the latest test plan template is automatically created as a page in the info hub and linked back to the JIRA task. The team now have all the information they need injected directly into the place where they work within JIRA and Confluence. There's no need to look for any required processes or templates. Armed with everything the team need, they're now able to power on with what they do best and with full confidence that there'll be no surprises down the track. Having SDLC practices and templates automatically created in JIRA and Confluence means we are able to inject metadata with these, with, which we use to automate reporting. Within our in-house developed tool, we can see the progress each tech delivery squad is making against each of the SDLC practices. Governance teams are able to view an enterprise-wide report on compliance with their controls and lean into support delivery teams early where required. Our reporting is also a key input into our continuous improvement process, where we're able to identify practices and processes that are taking the longest to complete. We use trend data to inform our automation process and optimization prioritization process, which enables scaled improvements to velocity. Finally, teams are able to ship their software to production with no surprises or manual compliance reporting required. I'll briefly come, cover some of the high level benefits provided so far before Andy talks uh, about what we're up to next. So for software delivery teams, We've leveraged the centralized use of JIRA and Confluence to provide teams with upfront knowledge on what they need to do and are provided guidance on how. Work is taken to the team so that I need to go looking for information as the latest version of requirements and templates are uh, injected directly into their JIRA and Confluence spaces. 
Users have and will continue to play an active role in developing and improving the end-to-end -end delivery process. For governance teams, they get automated visibility of compliance with their controls and can focus on managing exceptions rather than chasing updates from individual teams. They also have a mechanism to update practices on scale across the organization based on any learnings that come up over time. And for the enterprise, we get consistently high quality software shipped to production, which is great for CBA customers. We also get a view of where bottlenecks are in delivery that aids in our continuous improvement. I'll hand over to Andy now to talk through what we're up to next. Thanks, Andrew. So the SDLC rolled out, we had a fantastic uplift in code quality that was going to production. The second outcome that we got from it was excellent insights and data around the areas of the SDLC where the teams were moving through the most slow. This, this enabled us to identify areas we could automate and we took a step, back, a step back and decided the best way to do that was to embed our controls in automated pipelines. So that was what we went down. And the idea was that through that automation, we also would be able to integrate back to the Atlassian products of Jira and Confluence and update them as a team progressed through the SDLC and their, as, their, as their code was going into production. So we broke down the production change lifecycle into the following categories. And when we looked at that, we worked out in what areas can we both collect attestations from the, for the controls compliance, as well as use those attestations to provide gating along the way in the process. And the three areas where we thought we were going to gather attestations were in the baseline governance phase, which is before, just at the, the beginning of the journey for the teams, the development phase, and then the build phase. And then obviously there'll be gating in that areas, which I'll, I'll touch on shortly, and also selective gating just before the hard gating, before we go to production with the code change. The first area to look at is the baseline governance. These are prerequisite tasks that don't change from deployment to deployment. One of the things we noticed with the SDLC was that when teams were making the same change, we thought there was a good, good way for them to be able to automate the attestations they've already, already collected. And that's where the baseline governance came in. Things, examples of this is when you're setting up and maintaining a build pipeline. This is a prerequisite in the SDLC, as well as defining and implementing a monitoring strategy. Two things that, that need to be done before a team can entertain making changes to push out to production. Once the teams have done the baseline governance and they're on their way, we then have the code development phase, which is the, probably the most important phase of the entire journey. There's a whole number of things that, we, that, are doing, that are in this phase that we've embedded to make sure that the code is the highest quality. Of course, we have peer reviews in Git, which is a standard thing. The peer reviews is actually the first form of hard gating because the code can't be merged to the master branch until the peer review has been completed and it's passed. But also we've embedded managing code security and quality. We have code scanning tools in this phase that do that. Now, depending on the maturity of the team, how far left we've shifted that scan. So some of them will have scanning shifting on the developer's machine, where others will do that, that, that scan later on in, in the development cycle. But as soon as we get that scan, we can use those results. We capture the attestation, put it in the attestation store, and we can use them as early as we can. So for the ones that have shifted left, we'll stop the teams merging the code in, into the master branch if their code security or their code quality uh, uh, um, targets are not met. And code security includes uh, having passwords and code as well. So this is a very good part, a very big part of the, of, the, the, of the process, as we said. And at this point in time, we are able to update some of the SDLC practice in JIRA uh, that, that were created earlier when the team kicked off the process. The next phase is the, deploy, is the deployable asset. This is the build phase. So it's a really important phase once again. And once again, we were able to inject a lot of control gating into this space. For example, unit tests are normally executed by the build tool, as well as integration testing once the build is complete. And of course, the artifact, once it's ready to go, is put into the artifact store in Artifactory. Now, at this point in time, we have, we have Artifactory and X-ray. So the artifacts are scanned for license compliance. And obviously, during the build phase, a lot of open source tooling could be um, dependencies could be pulled into the artifact. We need to make sure that those licenses are compliant as well. So once again, depending on the, on the maturity of the team, um, we can either stop them here while we're doing live scans of the, of the artifact, or it can be done in the actual deployment phase, which is more common in our current scenario. So we have the deployable asset, the code's been done, it's been checked in, all the governance has been done at this point. We've got an asset that we're ready to promote to production. And this is the most crucial part right at the end to make sure we get things right. 
So every attestation that we've collected at this point is checked during the deployment phase. And this is where we have a number of hard gates. We have implemented across the bank an orchestration platform that ties all this tooling together. And it's able to check to make sure that all the attestations comply with the underlying controls. All the SDLC JIRA tickets have been closed sufficiently with sufficient evidence. And we are happy with all the checks and balances that we've done to this point. So everything here is embedded into, into blueprint pipelines. So as a team, so we have a collection of these pipelines that different teams can use depending on their target infrastructure, whether it's going to cloud or, or private cloud or public cloud, and also the tiering of the application. So all the applications in the bank have certain tiering depend, and that, that determines what controls comply. So all this intelligence is embedded into this selective gating process in the orchestration, orchestration platform. And that determines once, once and for all automatically whether these changes can go to prod. When they do, they are pushed out to production. So there is the whole life cycle. We managed to embed all our controls into our automated um, and our pipelines. We're confident that the SDLC has been complied with. And through this journey, a whole lot of manual processes that we were doing, there was manual gates with people, humans checking things. We were slowly able to automate more and more of those and to speed the teams up. And now we know we've got a good baseline of quality and also velocity, the teams can combine together to get changes to production in a safe, sound and secure manner. That concludes our journey all the way from the SDLC inception through to our DevOps ecosystem rollout. I hope you enjoyed our journey. I'd love to hear what you think around what we've done and also hear about your journey if it was similar. Thank you for listening from Andrew and myself.